scripture that came to mind we didn't do. It's on the screen. I said last week, your greatest revelation of who God is will be in your rest, not your stress. Jacob, Genesis 28, not on your screen. Jacob has really manipulated his brother Esau, has stole his birthright, has stole his blessings. Esau is out there. Esau is going to take him out. Esau is a hunter. You don't mess with a hunter. Esau is going to go over there and, 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 get ja and, and kill Jacob. Jacob leaves Bathsheba. He leaves and runs and he goes into the desert. And the word of God said Jacob was running because of decisions he's made. And then when those decisions cause them to have weight on him. Bad decisions will call you to have stress. Amen. Amen. And Jacob knew what he did. And Jacob laid down uh, at, at an altar, at a place, a pillar. He used a rock, a hard place, a stone as a pillar. And he laid down that with troubles. And sometimes we go to bed at night with like our pillars almost like a rock because we have so much weight on our head. Amen. Say amen. He goes to sleep that night, and this is where we get the story about Jacob's ladder. In a dream, in his rest, say rest, in his rest, in his dream. God will speak to you in dreams and visions and revelations. In his rest, Jacob seen angels like a ladder ascending and descending from heaven. We call it the Jacob's ladder. And he woke up from the dream, and he said, oh my, he said, Lord, just when I thought you wasn't in my situation, you were there all the time. Amen. He got that revelation in his rest. He said, God, I thought you were against me, but I found out right now you've always been for me. And he said, and he called that place, this place today, that I, that I laid my head upon. Remember, he laid it upon a stone. He said, I call it Bethel, meaning this place, meaning the house of God. you got to find your this place. In your life this might be your this place right direction church this place I found who he is and the word said that morning Jacob turned the pillow and he made it a pillar he just changed the position of his worries to God and he poured all on he said this is my altar and this is where I know that God has not left me nor forsake me that he was there working behind the scenes when I didn't even know it. That revelation came and Jacob was never the same. Never the same. So this morning, it's the voice. We hear so many voices. If you don't hear voices in your head, you're dead. <laughs> you was dead. We entertain voices all day long. Which one is ours? Which one's not? It's like, you know, I was in Texas a year ago. We went to this little place to marry somebody in, I'm going to call it Egypt, Texas, because I didn't know where it was at. <laughs> don't, don't get crazy on me. I see the hair going up. Jesus name touch her. And we said, where is this place? She said, D, it's so bad. We don't even have cell tower. No bars. Here it is. You see your cell phones. You got to get into a place where you have a receiving bars. You got to find a place. So what I had to do when I had to call somebody, Pastor D had to go run up on this hill. <laughs> talk to me. Call, I was calling Carl Frank about uh, going to the mission house. Call. Talk to me. I turned it over here. D, I lost you. I had to get to the right place. <laughs> it's the truth. Now, my question is, I'm going to tell you a, a lot today. What are the barriers that get into your head that closes the voice of God? Pride, one, pride. Proud is that I'm doing so well, I don't think I need to hear his voice. Pride in reverse is low self-esteem, I'm not worthy to even hear his voice. We live at one level, either I'm, so, I'm doing so great, so fantastic, or maybe I don't want to hear God's voice because you know what, I, I'm my own man, I'm doing good. I told you a long time ago, I went to go witness to somebody on Corrine Avenue, he was sitting out in front of his lawn. Corrine has a, a neutral ground in front of it. They were sitting on their lawn chairs looking this way. I didn't know they were looking at their house. 
I was doing uh, meter reading the gas company. I stopped. I started to kind of witness to you guys. And I said, how you doing? I talked to him about Jesus. He said, you know, to be thankful, I'm doing good without him. You see, it's pride. He said, I'm doing good without him. And he said, look at what I have. I did it all. I'm like, you're going to lose it all. Because <laughs> however pride goes up, what the word says, there is a fall. Well, a few months later, Katrina came along and there was a fall. His house wasn't exempt just like nobody else. Then we have what? Fear. She is, I'm afraid to hear his voice because maybe, I don't know, but because he might, maybe he might tell me to do something. He might tell me to get rid of something. He might ask me something that I don't want to give up. Or fear is I'm afraid because maybe, maybe if I hear his voice, then that means I have to be obedient to the voice. Like I told you last week when the Lord told me I was Edgar, this was last week when I was telling about you in Honduras. Edgar's here today, and, uh, and he said, you know, are you coming to Honduras with me? I said, H-E double hockey six, no. I ain't, going, I ain't going to Honduras. Why? I was listening to my voice, I ain't going. Then I entertained another voice, the enemy. He said, you got enough troubles going on, Shamat, why do you want to go to Honduras? I'm like, you, you, you will speak to the voice. Don't tell me you don't speak to the voice, I know, I know where you live. I started having a conversation with the devil. I started agreeing with a lie. You're right. You know, I got enough going. I got two kids in school. I'm blah, 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 and I'm going on and on. And I'm just going on. I'm telling him why I can't go. Sometimes we, our communication is one way. And then about three weeks later, I heard a still small voice. I knew it was a voice because it was the spirit. Because why? You, you recognize it. You know because it impressed your heart. That's when you know it's the Holy Spirit. It impresses your heart. And I heard this voice. And listen, the, the voice will never condemn you. It will convict you to the cross or convict you to do what you have to do. But he won't strong arm you and take you to the cross. That's right. yeah. Then I heard this for three weeks. I've heard, rah, 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 why, yeah. I heard this voice saying, why won't you go for me? And I said, I'm afraid to go. It was fear. I'm afraid to go because why? I have my whole life figured out and I'm not going to go in ministry. God said, I'm about to wreck your world. <laughs> and in Honduras, you know, after you were there in 1999, I came back and I sat in the shower for two days, crying my eyes. I don't know what my water bill was. That was water. <laughs> because I knew that I knew that I knew that I heard the voice. That's going to be the last message, how to be obedient to the voice. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Pride. Bitterness. Say bitterness. Yes. Bitterness. Let's deal with this one. Bitterness. Now, when you hold on to hurts, resentment, and grudges, you will block the voice of God because your heart, your receiver, will go bad. Your receiver will go bad. People go, well, it's just this or that. No, 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 no. It's a hurt. It's a wound. And nursing the wound is the problem because we're entertaining the wrong voice. Now, I wrote this down, holding on to hurts, resentment, or grudges becomes then a self-inflicted wound because you're doing it to yourself. Amen? And you keep holding on to what was. My mom was telling me the other day, she was at a friend's house, you know, everybody's up in Asia and where she lives at, and everybody's coming. And they were in the garage talking, and somebody said, hey, do you have this certain item? He says, oh man, I once had it, but you know, I had it, I had a lot of stuff by that Katrina. And my mom said they went on for a whole hour about 2005. And it was like some people are stuck in a time warp in their life. Come on, say amen. amen. And you're stuck. And the next thing you know, I said, Ma, how long did you listen to this? About an hour. I said, about three minutes. I've been looking for the green bridge and do a Peter Pan off the bridge. 
Because why? Oh my God. Stop living in the past. Let it go. Why do I need to let it go? They don't deserve unforgiveness, but you need to go on with your life. Oh, I'm the Holy Ghost. They don't deserve forgiveness, but you need to get on with your life. Come on, say amen. Say, listen, some people in life will take you so far, and that's the end of a season, and God will give you new people for a new season. You got to just grab on. Listen, you can't let, you, you, gotta, you, you got to let it go. The plan was to make you bitter. But God can make you better. So there's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. Look, it's a choice. Okay, but what, 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 what chokes out something? The Word of God says this, Luke 8.14. It says this, the seed, the word, that fell among the thorns, it fell among the things of life. The things that just twist, like, like just think of a thorn bush. Those who hear it, but as soon as they go away, they are choked out by what? Three things. They do not mature. Here we go. Three things that will choke out you from hearing the voice of God. One, worries. Jesus said it. Worries. And I, I, listen, worries are like weeds. Say weeds. Weeds, weeds grow in the garden. What they do, their, 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 their purpose is to take life from the good stuff. Amen. The weed will take the nutrition, the things that are vital, and take it and suck life away from what God has. You see, worry's goal is that it would bring confusion. Because it's the what if. Come on, you know what I'm talking about, what if. What if I wouldn't have done that? What if I wouldn't have done that? What if I wouldn't have jumped? What if I wouldn't have just went jogging out there? I wouldn't have turned my knee up. What if? See, it, worry doesn't have answers. It leads to another question. And you never find results, okay? He said, worries, anxiety. It's a scheme. Understand? It's a scheme. It is designed to take you off the frequency where you're hearing scrambled messages. You ever go on the radio where you can't fine tune, you hear the static? It's called static. Say static. Static. Okay. Riches. Now, nothing wrong with money. It's the love of money. It's not money is the problem. It's the love of it. It's, that, it's the what your heart pursues the most because the word says where your treasure is, they will find yourself being there the most because that's where you want to be. And it wasn't riches that got your problem. It was the love of it. It's called, we can get into a spirit of covetousness. It's like, what? What I have, I have, but what I have is yours. I want yours. It's greed. You see, all that leads to what it becomes. It blocks the hearing of the voice. Because why? Your heart is in love with something else. It's called a divided heart or a divided receiver. And your heart will be divided because... You will tell this or that. I, 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 I've come to this conclusion. I should have been smart years ago. No matter what income you live at, you will, you, you'll, raise, you'll raise your living. You got to raise, be careful. Put it in the bank. No, we, we increase our credit card to go up higher. Come on. I'm, I'm not talking to, I'm talking to real people. Amen? If that's not you, come up here for an altar call and I can get you for lying. <laughs> it's the truth. You see, it's, it's riches. It's going after. It's pursuit. I know, because I used to love, I told my wife, years, many years ago, I'm working on Sunday because Sunday is double time and a half. And I'm going to work and make about $500 that day. We're talking about way back when. And I'm like, man, I came home and I made, and guess what happened? The next day the refrigerator went out. Money <laughs> goes, you, maybe went to, you went to church, maybe the refrigerator would have stayed on. Because <laughs> now you have to take your $500 that you made yesterday, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Know-it-all, and we're going to have to throw it on uh, a credit card and go get a refrigerator. 
You see what I'm saying? You gotta listen. You gotta. You can't. You can't substitute your God moments. Third thing is what pleasures. Not not wrong with pleasure. But but finding so much riches so you can have more toys and more pleasure is guess what? But now we're lifting to a place of pleasures. He said these things. I'm not God. It's just as out of John 2, 15, 16. It's the love of the world. He said, but the Father's not in the love of the world. And pleasures is not going to make you burn, die, and go to hell. But you might be so pleasured that you miss the voice of God because you're entertaining other stuff. Amen. What I said, three things. What? Say worry. worry. Riches. And pleasures. It's called order. God is not the author of confusion. He's the God of order. Yeah. And listen, I don't want to say nothing, but when things are out of order, things are out of order. Things are mess. Yes. Amen? And what I think God is doing is God is trying to get the family back in order again so we can hear God's voice and know what God's plan is. Amen? So, so we got barriers, and then we got things that choke out. See, the thing is, the Spirit of God, he talks to you through impressions, not through your thoughts. Because the Word says that my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. He doesn't talk brain to brain. He talks into your spirit. It's a spirit to spirit. And we have to sometimes, when we get a thought and idea, we have to say, hey, man, was that God? Or was that me? Or was that the devil? It was an idea. And sometimes we don't know which one is it. Because let me tell you, the voice of the enemy will sound close to almost the voice of God. But it has a little bit of not truth in it. And a piece of truth is a lie. One thing says the word of God says two things that are unchangeable. It's out of Hebrews 6. God is not a liar. Can I lie? So we have to ask ourselves, what is the impression I'm getting? And is that God? How do we know? Man, I don't want to be fooled. I sound so close. Man, I thought it was him. Kind of find out when it was just me. So I'm going to share some things this morning. This is personal. How do you share? One thing you have to ask, I've learned this. This is not on screen. 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about God giving gifts out, gifts of uh, speaking in tongues, gifts of interpretations, gifts of healings, gifts. And he said there's a gift that you need. It said it's the gift of discernment which distinguishes between the spirits. Yeah. That's what he says. Discernment is what? It's the ability to decide, to discern between truth and error and right and wrong. It's the ability to, to discern the spirit. What is that the spirit? What is fear? The spirit of fear. What is bitterness? A spirit of bitterness. What is pride? A spirit of pride. It is all named after a spirit. So the Holy Spirit, God will talk to the spirit inside of you and he tells you, is this the right spirit you're operating in? What's your motive? What's your idea? What's your impression? He talks to you through your spirit. And he, he can, your spirit will give confirmation of what is real and what is not. This is how we do. 1 John 4.1 says this. Dear friends, don't believe everyone who claims to have a spirit of God. I didn't write that. Just because you're watching TBN, don't think everything's real. It's a Christian network. Give me a break. Amen? Not knocking TBN. Uh, I went home with Jimmy Swagger Network. You watch them all. Do what you want. You watch Jimmy Swagger Network all you want. I'm not saying that. I'm saying just because you hear it, don't believe it. In front of me. But what it says? Test. Test. 
Say again, test. 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 test them all to find out if it's really coming from God. Because many people waste, this is God, and guess what, honey? It's the world, it's something else. Amen. Amen. Why I said this? Because I say this because God gets blamed for a lot of evil. God gets blamed for a lot of evil. Man, you have me here on TV, some lunatic. He'll say, God told me to ride my car into the abortion clinic and just growl through the wall and kill people. That was God. I'm sorry, that was self. That was demonic, number one, it was self-motivated because it lifted you up on TV and put you on camera. Yeah. Amen? Come on. Yeah. God told me, God, listen, man, no. God's going to not tell you to go murder somebody and no. tell you it's good. No. It's okay. You know, yeah. some religions, you know, some religions say taking people down or blowing people up will give you a guarantee that you're going to make it in heaven. You're guaranteed to make it in. Or if you, if you do something, you get 70 virgins. Hey, ain't enough virgins to go around for all you men. <laughs> 70 virgins. Are you out of your mind? You find 70 virgins. Are you laughing at me? I'm, I'm telling you what you're thinking. But it's self-motivated because why? You, you take somebody out to lift you up. Woo! Come on, catch it. You missed it. You take somebody out to lift you up. All that's demonic. All that blowing the towers up and all that. Let me tell you something. That is demonic. It was self-motivated. It was to glorify self. So, it says test it. Okay. Now, let me, go, let me give you a thing. How do you test it? Say, how you test it, Brother D? What do you test it with? How you test this stuff? Glad you asked. Man, here we go. Here it is. How you test it? Do you, does it agree with the word of God? Come on. Right? Snapshot that. Does it agree with the word of God? Is it the word of God in it? Test your idea. Well, what J J uh, J wait, wait, wait. Corinthians says this. Cast down all imaginations. And there's more. Cast all imaginations. And, and thoughts. Cast them down. Come on. I got it on right? All right. All right. It says you cast all imagination, you cast down what? You have thoughts. You got, sometimes you got to cast thoughts down first because where something hurt at a voice, you cast it down. Because sometimes you know it's not God. Sometimes you know automatically it's not God. So what do you got to do? You got to cast it down. You got what? Every high thing that exalts itself against what? The word of God, the knowledge of God, the word of God. And what? It brings every thought into captivity, the obedience of God. Now you got to test it with the word. Why? Why we got to test it with the word so much? Why the word? Why the word? God doesn't change his principle to give you your desire. God's will will never violate God's word. That's a lot right there. God's will will never contradict God's word. Amen. And his principle won't violate your desires if your desires are not with good intent. He said, God gives you desires of your heart. Yeah, if it lines up with his will. Right. You gotta read the whole thing. Right. Yeah. God give me desires of God give me desires of your heart. Well, he gives you desires of your heart if it lines up with his will. And his will has to line up with his word. I guess why? Because he cannot violate his principle. Listen, a little thing here. God will, listen, this is a true story. Listen, God will not wreck a marriage to give you another marriage. Come on. Somebody said that's a good one. That's it. Amen. Amen. God will, listen, you can pray all you want to the cows come home, boo. God is not going to wreck a marriage so you can get somebody's husband. Get your own husband. Amen? True story. Here we go. You are the, re you say men. Here we go. I'm going to give you a, men, a women's thing today. Men, you're going to say yes. Say yes. Yes. Men say yes. Um, this is a learning curve. Pastor D, one-on-one. -on -one. Troy, take this down. There's a learning curve for you when you're dating somebody. Here we go. My wife 
the women are an antenna. You are the receiver. Women are your helpmate. They came from your side. If they come from your head, they want to rule you. Well, that's what she wants to do. And, <laughs> and they're not under your feet, so you can dominate them. They came from your side to be what a helpmate, so you won't make foolish mistakes. Come on. Yeah, look at that. Look at me laughing. Good laughing. Listen, and somehow or another, I don't know, this is the, I, I can't biblically find this, but I'm a, I will find it one day, that somehow or another, when it comes to other women, their antenna gets higher. What you mean? When it comes to somebody else liking you or look having your eye on you, their antenna has like an extension ladder. It gets higher and higher. <laughs> they have a radar. And one day, years ago, she said, so-and-so, this woman, church, she's liking you. Like a foolish person, like I know what I'll say, get behind me. Like, what are you out of your mind? You crazy? That girl's happily married. She hardly makes like six figures and blah, 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 blah. Are you out of your head? She says, warn me, I'm telling you. And like a good husband, I said, get behind me. I know it all. Wrong. But if you want to know truth, you don't ask the, you don't want, if you want to know truth about family, you don't ask the husband and wife because everybody's doing great. How y'all doing? Wonderful, fine. We're doing. Go, go do children's church. <laughs> so my wife, she's smart. Women will find a way to get to that root of that problem. I don't know how to do it. They will, they will move heaven and earth to move that. I'm telling you. She said, I'm volunteering for children's church today. I said, what? I am. I'm going to children's church. I said, okay. Move up. Don't worry about it. Take care of business. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. You're laughing. You're laughing at me. You know it's true. And she goes to the class, and, one, and the, the woman's daughter, it happens to be in our class, and she's, you know, about five years old, so young kids will tell you everything. <laughs> how are you doing? We're doing wonderful. Ba eight. Baby, how are you doing, honey? My mom and dad are fighting every night, man. They have a test group and they're drinking now because he said my mom drives him crazy. Okay. <laughs> we got, we got, see, kids will tell you the truth. <laughs> they're fighting every night. Pray for them, pray for them. Okay. So my wife says, Oh, okay, so and so. Uh, and I said, How did your, did your mama like Pastor D? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <we did>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my mom likes Pastor D. Oh, well, how much do you like Pastor D? She loves Pastor D. <laughs> and she said, How much does she love Pastor D? She said, She writing his name at the table like it was him. Derek and so and so. She's, don't you think this name was great, me and him? He put her name where Miss Bonnie name at. And I said, okay, here we go now. <laughs> We're going to DEFCON 5. You know what I'm talking about? She said, oh, okay, sweetie. You know judgment is coming. It's not going to be the woman first. It's going to be yours truly first. <laughs> because at the end of the day, she walked at the children's church. I'm saying, how was children's church? Come in, Mr. Know-it-all. <laughs> I told you to stay away from her. Oh my. What? I said, I'm warning you so that you'll make a fool of yourself and you can lose your calling in ministry, you fool. Because I love you enough to tell you when nobody else will. Woo, come on. Amen? Oh, we got good. We on good time. Here we go. Listen. No, she said, the little girl said, the little girl said, when I asked her, um, so your mama loves Pastor D? And she said, yeah. She said she wants to marry him. Oh. Oh. That's what she said. Yeah, wants to marry She puts her name on the paper, Mr. and Mrs. My wife calmed that rooster tail down. under Because <laughs> you know it's children. Oh, boy, let's just pray right now for your mama. I'm about to kill her. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, move on. Well, move on, move on. My move on. A true story, too. Here's a guy here, you guys. Here, guys. Listen, my wife says, you think after all the years I trained you, I'm going to give you to somebody else? You out of your mind? <laughs> Come on now. Calm down. She said, it took a lot of effort to train him. You think I'm going to give him away now when he's doing something? Oh, hell no. <laughs> I train him well, and you think I'm gonna give him to somebody else? You got another thing coming. Say amen, say amen. You, you're talking hey. like you're talking. Listen, I trained him well. 
when he was going out with somebody, huh? when he was going to the show, and when a woman says, when I ask her, do you want popcorn or drink, they say no, listen to Detroit, no means yes for a woman. <laughs> You gotta understand the language. We are far apart. To me, a man, you don't want anything, brother? No, no means no. Right. <laughs> no means yes. <laughs> right. So like a fool, I sit in the show with my cheap seat popping up. I'm getting down with the show and I'm putting down with her. And everybody else eating popcorn, she's looking at me. I go, you want anything, boo? She said, no, I, I don't want nothing. I really don't want anything. I didn't get the signal. <laughs> the signal was get up and go to the lobby. But after years, she has trained me well. Because now, we went to the show the other night. And I made a big mistake of saying, you pay for the tickets, I'll pay for the refreshments. Wrong. <laughs> wrong. Say wrong. 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 Oh, she agreed. Sure, why not? I fell into it. And I know better. Get the large jumbo popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get that little small thing. Y'all see, I train you well. And put butter on it. Butter's the only thing free around it. Get a lot of butter on it. <laughs> Pick your butt and just squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. And oh yeah, by the way, you know about it. You're laughing now. You know about it. You still don't have enough butter on it. And I'm still having enough butter on it. No matter what I do, ain't enough butter. I said, lady, would you just put your mouth underneath the butter machine? I don't know what they tell you. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, you better get a lot. You know I want a large cola ice. You know that. You are no better than that. I taught you too good. Got large, yeah. And what about the nachos and chips and the jalapenos on the side? I look like I was carrying a food tray up that aisle. And I know better. Did you get plain of napkins? I got napkins all, I got, I went to Costco later, but I got enough napkins to get all. I got extra straws, because this man not going back twice. Once I get through that seat, I'm not going to be embarrassed. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me for the fourth time. Get your act together, man, sit back down. You're blocking the screen. Amen? I'm telling real. I'm moving on, but the whole point is this. It takes time to know something. It takes time to know the voice. Amen? Because why? God is consistent. He's not, say God is consistent. He's not moody. Oh, he's not moody. Oh. He's not moody like you and I. He doesn't have bad days. He creates the days. He's consistent. He doesn't change. It's, listen, God's word and your thoughts, your ideas will have to be in harmony, okay? Uh, it has to be in harmony. It has to be in sync. Two things is, does this idea make me more like, it, more like Jesus? Does my thoughts make me more like Jesus? In other words, you and I were born for one thing, purpose to look more like Jesus. Amen. You and I were born for a purpose that you would look and have the character of Jesus. Now, the word of God says this. Look, James 3 says this. Any... Are any of you wise or sensible? Then show it by living right and being humble and wise in everything you do. Does my thought self-motivated or is it selflessness or is it self-promotion to glorify me, to put me in the spotlight? Because Jesus said he got out the spotlight. He come to serve, not be served. I mean, he come to serve, not be served. Amen. James says this. Then show it by living right. Look at verse 14. But if your heart, that's the way the ideas come in, is full of bitterness, selfishness, don't brag or lie or cover up the truth, jealousy, all the above. So here it is. If your idea, if your thought has something self-promoting in it, the word's going to tell you it is not of God. If you have a jealous or envy to get back at somebody and you're entertaining these voices, that is not the voice of God. Right. Right. God says do evil for good. Do not do evil for evil. Amen? That's the voice. Ideas that are selfishness, self-centered, where, man, it will promote me. It will, it, will, listen, it will promote me, but it will take people down. The process, guess what? It's not motivated by God. These are ideas, these are thoughts. Okay? Um, envy. You envy because somebody else got a car. And you say, I'm going to go get me one too, just like you, so I can be like you. That way that thought came. That didn't come from God. That wasn't a God thought. That was, that was self motivated. Come on, say self. All right? Gossip is demonic. I'm going to show you why. 
It's the word of God. Let's read verse 15. This kind of wisdom, this kind of ideas, this kind of thoughts, this kind of motives, what? Does not come from above. It is earthly, selfish, and comes from himself. There you go. Gossip is satanic because it is based on half truth which is a lie and it's based on self-motivated I have something I know something you don't know I have a secret you don't Amen. tearing somebody down and not building somebody up that is of the enemy so hear me and hear me nice this is not I'm not playing gossip is of the devil tune your ears say honey I, I, I'm not entertaining that get back behind me Satan I know where this is going you're going to tear somebody down, a brother down, that I don't even know what's going on. You're getting half a story, which is half truth, which half truth is a lie. Amen. Amen. I want to say, somebody say, I need the Holy Ghost is here. Listen, we have to, we, you have to test it. You have to see if this is God. Am I going to hurt somebody? Or am I going to help somebody? I want to get even. I want to get back with somebody. That's not God, maybe. That's the enemy because you're hurt. And you're still hurting on this. And God's probably provoked you to tell you, I hate to tell you this, but you have a still a little bit of hurt left in your heart. And if you allow me, I'll take it all the way out. But it was so far rooted, you couldn't even find it. And so I brought something up several months later to test you again to see if you were okay. And then your actions said something because out of the abundance of the heart, the what? The mouth will speak. And then it came because then you say, man, I thought I was over that. It was the Holy Spirit convicting you, not condemning you. Condemning you is of the wrong spirit. The Holy Spirit will convict you not to go, ha ha, convict you, go, you know what, sister? You still need to go, you still need to go back to the cross. Amen. You haven't quite laid it all down yet. You know what I'm talking about? It's still a little bit there, and it's still got you under your skin, and it still hurts. I can see, but I'm not doing it to bring it up for you so I can show you. I'm bringing it up so I can help you make you better, not bitter. Amen? amen. Say amen. amen. And that's what God does. Third thing is this, closing out with this one. Does it bring confusion or peace? Does it bring confusion or peace? You hear people say, man, I'm so confused, I don't know what to do. Come on, I'm not the only one that said that in life. Man, I don't know what to do. You're entertaining the wrong voice. You're entertaining the wrong voice because 1 Corinthians 14 says this, For God is not a God of order. He's a God of order. Disorder, not disorder, but a God of peace. God is not a God of disorder. He's a God of peace. He's not the author of confusion. He's the God of clarity. Right. Let's go here for a little bit. It's only 10 o'clock. We got, we got time. Say, we got time. We got all the time. We got time. We got time. I'm, I'm, I'm getting 10, 15 minutes from last week. I'm fudging in. When we hear voices that are confusing, confusion is meant to entertain you. And confusion is noise, say noise. noise. I said last week in, in First Kings when Elijah was in a cave and the Lord told him, Get, the Lord said, what are you doing here? He didn't say, how you got here, man? What the heck's wrong with you? He told Elijah, what are you doing here? How did you get here? How did you end up here, man? What happened to you? You just call fire down from heaven, and now you're laying in the cave. Because the word of God says he heard the voice of Jezebel, heard the verse of, uh, of the wrong voice. And he ran and hid. And I said, last week, the Lord told him to get out of the cave. See, the Lord will tell you, get out the cave. The enemy will tell you, stay in your cave. Hear me out. Hear me out. The enemy will tell you, stay in your depression. Stay in the darkness. God will say, what are you doing here? Get into the light. Because why? When you're into the light, you can see clarity. In darkness, you can't see a thing, but in light, you can see everything. And he told him, get out the cave. He said, stand upon this mountain. 
Now the word says, and then the, there was a great earthquake, there was a great wind, and there was a great fire. What was all that last week? That was distractions. That was just in life, you're gonna, have, you're gonna have a lot of earthquakes, you're gonna have a lot of well, wind, and you're gonna have a lot of fire, heat. Those are sometimes designed up for distractions so you won't hear the, what, the still small voice. He said the Lord wasn't in all that. The Lord is not in noise. He's a still small voice. He will not scream over something to get your attention. He will whisper to you. And he will whisper into your spirit. And sometimes you can't hear it because there's so much noise in front of you that you have to weed out the distractions so that you can hear and receive. You gotta shut off the world. Oh, I love that. You gotta shut off the world and tune into the God frequency. Come on. Because God will bring you into a place of clarity, not confusion. Clarity is when you begin to see going, what? Sometimes you're so deep in the forest you can't see anything. Hear me out. Sometimes you're so deep in high water you can't see a thing. But God will pull you out and go, look where you're at, man. You were in bondage and didn't even know it. You thought you were free, but you wasn't. Come on now. He brings clarity so that you can see. And then when you can see, he says, those who listen, listen what? Those who have ears, let them have ears for what my spirit is saying. Yes. He didn't say my word, he said my spirit. Yes, amen. You see? We hear voices all day long. You have to be very careful what voice you entertain. Yes. Because the more you entertain a voice, the more ground you will give it. And the enemy will love you to entertain the cubics when there's a diamond over here. See, the discernment was, is not knowing right from wrong. Discernment is knowing right from dead right. Because a lot of stuff sounds good really does. But discernment is knowing the right from dead right. And the word tells you that in the last days, people will have their ears itched because they will not put up with sound doctrine. Mark this. Paul said, mark this. They will be entertained what? The what makes me feel good? Self. But Jesus said something that was ridiculous. He said to, to the world, but it's to him. He said this, if you want to come follow me, you must have to deny yourself. See, it's total opposite. So we're coming into a time, say we come, we're not in the last, we're in a time where you're going to start seeing people's ears be itched by the wrong spirit. Because they will not be they want to be entertained because why? We have so much that can entertain us right here. We don't have to. We could do this. This could keep you going for hours. <laughs> Facebook, this book, that book, and every book they got, social media, YouTube. And it's designed so that you would be so entertained that you might just miss the still. So here we go, closing out with this. You have to judge and test what you hear. If it contradicts the word, shut it down. Bang, over with, done. You know what I'm saying? If it's self-motivated, wait a minute. They got to step on, he wants to glorify himself and raise him up, but you have to step on 10 people in order to get it. Guess what? That ain't God, that's you. He said, gossip, don't attain it. Recognize it, test it, because when it's tested, when it's proven, then you know it's him. Next week I'll talk about how you know it's him. 
And the fourth message, oh, you're going to be obedient to the voice once you hear it. God will free will let you go either way. The Holy Spirit is a perfect gentleman. He will not twist your arm, just like with Edgar in Honduras. He didn't twist me and say, you're going to go. You're the 12th person on this trip. Don't you know you're going to come whether you like it or not? That's not the Holy Ghost. You know what the Holy Ghost will do? He'll get somebody else to go in your place, and you know you missed it. Thank God I went, brother. Thank God I went. Because why? Some, listen, you're not going won't stop God's work. He'll just get somebody in your family to do it. He'll get your kid to show you. Amen? Amen. Amen? We have too much entertaining. And entertaining causes our receiver to get off the wrong frequency. We have to get back to listening and hearing his voice. Jesus said this, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not entertain. Stand up this morning. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit in this place. Jesus, Jesus, Holy Spirit in this place. Did you enjoy that word this morning? Amen. Amen. I know it's Holy Ghost, I know it's Holy Ghost because why, it's just in my spirit. I just had a look at the notes of the scripture. But it was in my spirit. Because it's a God moment where God is speaking to me again. But I have to listen to the voice. This morning, I just want you to lift your hands this morning, brother. We're just going to surrender, brother. I want you to just do a song about surrendering out, brother. I'm going to surrender out this morning. Here it is, called Selling Out. He is selling out. Oh, dear, you're selling out? Yes, I am. I'm selling out. I give up. Come on. That's, that's where it starts right now. 